Last week, Yamaha announced arguably one of the biggest and most important motorcycle launches for 2021, and that is the MT-09. It's the biggest revision that the motorcycle has had since it was launched back in 2013. So this is our first look review of the motorcycle, so please give us a like, let us know what you think, and subscribe to the channel too. So let's get into it. Yamaha's MT range is one of the most popular ranges of motorcycles in the market. In fact, it's pretty rare that you should go to a bike meet and not see an MT-09. And what is the reason for this? Well, at least in my mind, they're just a fantastic package. A real showpiece of a motor, really comfortable riding position with upright bars, good road going handling with a really nice lightweight and manageable feel, they've got futuristic styling and it's all at a really competitive price point. It's just a winning product. It's also the base unit from which a model range is built from and hopefully we'll see an SP model further down the road, a new XSR 900, a Tracer 900, a Tracer GT and of course the Yamaha Nikon. So with that in mind, there's a huge amount of appetite for this new model. The first thing to know is that the launch video is really cool. It's futuristic and clearly tells the story of an evolution and rebirth of the original. And it totally fits with the Yamaha Dark Side of Japan design language that has become synonymous with the MT range. Which leads us on to the looks of the bike. This is clearly a contentious issue. And checking the comments on the Yamaha official video, it's clear to see that not everybody likes it. However, in my opinion, it's often the case with new bikes that they can take a little while to warm up to. For me personally, I think it looks great and it's a good move on. The front is a bit softer and it's more refined than the previous one and in the Storm Fluo colour, I think it looks wicked. We're so glad that they used the Nox Handroid Pod gloves in the making of this launch. It totally fits the futuristic looks of the bike, so if you're looking for the ultimate gloves to twist that MT-09's throttle, look no further. The riding position and overall dimensions and stance of the bike seem to be pretty consistent with the outgoing model, which is a good thing. It's one of the more upright naked bikes and feels quite motard like when you're sat on it. Now the big announcement and the real attention grabber is the all new motor. The previous MT-09 motor is an absolute peach. I've ridden it in a couple of guises, firstly in the Tracer 900 model with Bike World when we pitched it against the 950 Multistrada. I remember being blown away at how the bike mixed the feeling of a four cylinder smoothness that was so easy to ride and yet simultaneously had a great spread of power and torque everywhere in the rev range. The MT-09 is also the bike that I learned to wheelie on at Extreme Wheelie, a perfect bike for it as it has got such a lot of snap and power to pop that front wheel up in the air. Asking the instructor Ash at the end of the day how my training and practice would work out on my own GSX-R 750, Ash turned round and said, Uh, buy an MT-09. <laughs> <laughs> of course I've worked it out and can pretty much wheelie anything now, but the fact remains that there are a few bikes out there that could make a better wheelie bike, and I'm sure the new motor will be more of the same. The new motor is bigger, it's more powerful with 117 horsepower and has a higher torque figure of 68 foot-pounds. It's also now Euro 5 compliant and yet the wet weight is actually 4 kilos lighter than before at a 189 kilos wet. In fact, the engine setup and weight is incredibly similar to KTM's new 890 Jugar, albeit with a smoother delivery afforded by the 3 cylinder motor in comparison to the 890's twin. On paper at least, power wise there should be very little between them, or in fact any other bike in the sector. The other trick that Yamaha has up its sleeve is its Japanese reliability, and this is exactly why we've just bought our own WR250F enduro bike. Yamaha make reliable motorcycles. I also love what they've done with the exhaust, and it's another great example of innovation on Yamaha's part, similar to the R1 and how they've hidden the frankly massive catalytic converter that's required by Euro 5, without having an exhaust system that looks like a sidecar strapped to the side of a motorcycle. The new MT-09 does have a big cat, and I'm sure that will be revealed when the front wheel is in the air, but they've hidden it so well with a really nice underbelly exhaust. 
Quite how well it'll look after a season of winter riding is yet to be seen, but from my point of view it is a really nice design. Yamaha has also addressed the biggest challenge on the previous model, that is the chassis and suspension setup which was arguably the weakest point. This could be fixed with an aftermarket suspension upgrades, but the new model should be much better from stock, with an all new and lighter chassis with significantly more rigidity. The forged wheels are also 700 grams lighter, which undoubtedly will improve turning in speed, and significantly the suspension is totally revised with fully adjustable setup in the front and rear, which again should just be a massive improvement. Completing the handling package and for you guys out there with eagle eyes like my own, the bike is shown with S22 Bridgestone tyres. I've tested these now in a couple of bikes including the new 1290 Super Duke R and I think they're a really good sports tyre in the dry, in the wet and in aggressive riding and it's great to see Yamaha taking one of the most important components seriously on this model. The MT-09 is also now fitted with more electronic features, with a 6-axis IMU controlling all the interventions including lean sensitive traction control, slide control, wheelie control and cornering ABS. This is all interfaced with a new TFT dash which looks really nice. The MT-09 also features a quick shifter up and down as standard. This standard electronics package looks to be pretty much market leading in my book, with most of the competitors as having comparatives, but all of the features mentioned are either on the full fat versions or their optional extras. So quite whether these flood the market in the same way that its predecessors did is yet to be seen. All that spec has to come at a cost, and so far it's unclear what the price point will be. However, like the Tenere 700, it wouldn't be the first time that Yamaha surprised the market with a super competitive price point, so we'll have to wait and see on that one. So in all, this new MT-09 could be one of the biggest new models for 2021, and on paper at least, it rocks.